this is an introduction to statics. And statics is something that we usually talk about when we talk about Newton's second law, because it's all about forces, and in this case, balanced forces. Objects or systems that are static means that they're not moving, and they're not going to move. So these are systems that are fixed in place or held in place, which means that their velocity is zero, but also their acceleration is zero. And if their acceleration is zero, it means that their net force has to be zero, and that's something that Newton's second law tells us. And Newton's second law tells us that net force is equal to mass times acceleration, or we could write it like this. which means the sum of all the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So if the acceleration of the system is zero, that tells us that the net force or the sum of all the forces on the object or the system is also equal to zero. So that part is some pretty simple math. If acceleration is zero, it means that net force is zero, or the sum of all the forces is equal to zero. Engineers often use the concepts of statics when they're designing and building bridges and buildings and other, other structures that we, they don't want to move. So here's an example. But that's kind of complicated, so we're not going to worry about complicated systems like this one. We're going to start with something more basic. So let's try this example. We've got a 50 kilogram mass, and it's going to be suspended by a cable, and the cable is going to look something like this. Like so, and we'll have, we'll call that tension T1, and we'll see that there's another cable attached to some structure over here, we'll call that tension T2, and of course to complete our free body diagram we need the weight, so the weight straight down, and that's Fg, so there's our weight. And we can find the weight using the mass and the gravitational field strength of the earth, and so the weight is 50 kilograms, times 9.8 newtons per kilogram and that gives us a weight of 490 newtons so because this is a two-dimensional problem, we break down our force vectors into components. So the tension T1 on the left has a Y component, and it also has an X component. And this angle will be theta. We'll call that theta. And we'll say in this example that theta, that angle is 50 degrees. Now because the system is static, we know that the sum of all the forces in the x direction must be equal to zero. That's true in the y direction as well. So the sum of all the forces in the y direction is equal to zero, too. So in the y direction, we have an upward force, which is tension T1. and the y component of tension T1 is T1 sine theta. We also have the downward force, which is the force of gravity, and that's it in the y direction. So when we add those together, we have to get a total of zero. So T1 sine theta must be equal to the weight and we already know what that is, 
So T1 sine theta is equal to 490 newtons. That's as far as we can go with the y direction so far. In the x direction, we know that T2, and I'll take right to be positive, minus T1 cosine theta must be equal to zero because the forces have to be balanced in the x direction as well because the system is in equilibrium. So T2 must be equal to T1 cosine theta. So if we take equation one and we divide by equation two, we've got T1 sine theta over T1 cosine theta is equal to 490 newtons over T2. And now, we can simplify a bit. We know sine theta over cosine theta is equal to tan theta. And so now, since we know theta, We'll substitute so for tension T2 we get 411.2 newtons And since T2 is equal to T1 cosine theta, we know that T1 is equal to T2 divided by cosine theta, which is equal to 411.2 newtons divided by cosine 50 degrees. So T1 is equal to 639.7 newtons. Let's try another example in which we have a sign, a large sign that's held up with a cable and also kept in place using a rod. We'll assume that the rod has no mass. So here's the sign for Marge's Cafe. The mass is 260 kilograms, which will enable us to find the weight. And the rod is over here, like so. And the cable is like this. So there's the cable, and we'll call that tension T1. And we'll say that this angle is 40 degrees, like so. So the rod's not part of the free body diagram, and the rod exerts a force of compression. And the force of compression has to be exerted this way, so we'll call that force of compression. So that's exerted by the rod. So we have three forces, the force of tension from the cable up to the left, force of compression from the rod to the right, and the force of gravity, or the weight, which is acting downward on the sign. So we can calculate the weight, m times g 
which is 260 kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And so for the weight of the sign, we get 2,548 newtons. So that's the force of gravity acting down on the sign. And of course, the force of tension will have two components, one in the x direction, one in the y direction. So they look like that. And we'll look at the balanced forces now. So we know that the sum of the forces in the y direction has to be zero. So we have T1 times sine 40 degrees is equal to the force of gravity, or actually a better way to do it, T1 sine 40 degrees minus the force of gravity is equal to zero. And now we can say T1 must be equal to the force of gravity divided by sine of 40 degrees. And we know that the force of gravity is, we've already found that, so 2,548 newtons over sine of 40 degrees, and so tension T1 must be equal to 3,964 newtons. Now let's look at the forces in the x-direction. We know that there's equilibrium in the x-direction as well, so the sum of the forces in the x-direction has to be zero. And so, let's see what we have in the x-direction. We've got the force of compression to the right, which I'll take as positive, minus T1 times cosine 40 degrees, and that must give us zero. So force of compression must be equal to T1 times cosine 40 degrees. So the force of compression in the rod has to be equal to 3,037 newtons when we worked that out. So that's the force of compression in the rod. And so if you were designing a system like this and you wanted to make sure that the sign never moved, you, ha you would have to make sure that the rod could withstand uh, this amount of compression force without being damaged, uh, 3,037 newtons. And similarly, the tensile strength of the cable helping to hold up the sign would have to be at least 3,964 newtons or else the cable would snap. Um, and so these are the kinds of things that engineers have to think about when they are using physics to design these kinds of systems because um, obviously we want them to be safe. And that's an introduction to statics.